we are going to discuss about putting functions here check the procedure we need to consider when we designing a putting for functions here we are going to explain today this is a part of uh, design of the spread footing or isolated footings the method of evaluating reinforcements and the other checks will be done separately in this lesson we are going to concentrate on punching shear check firstly we have to check the maximum shear stress if you draw the footing like this we are going to do two checks check the punching shear check the vertical line shear at here and check the shear stress at the punching shear perimeter this is we consider punching shear perimeter and this this lesson we are going to consider this punching shear perimeter as 1.5 d from the face of the column depending on the standard this might be this may be 2d or this may be d depending on your standard that you have to follow or that you have to consider from the standard let's calculate the maximum shear v max we have to calculate the maximum shear now the column ultimate load is 750 into the 10 to the power 3 divided by now we have four sides of the column and one side is 250 millimeter i have given in the data then it has to be multiplied by 250 that is the effective depth so we have the force divided by the area that's cross sectional area we have a column four side around the perimeter of the column we are going to check the shear stress so what's the value when you multiply by this value it will become 3 newtons per millimeter square right what's the maximum shear stress according to the British standard the maximum shear stress should be 0.8 hcu or 5 newtons per millimeter square whichever lesser you have to consider right let's see what's the values 0.8 hcu is equal to 25 from the data we have given so it is 4 newtons per millimeter square right now out of these should be 4 we have to consider and also v max is 3 newtons per millimeter square then v max plus than the 4 newtons per millimeter square therefore which is okay the vertical line shear is okay there is no failure the maximum shear stress is okay now let's calculate the shear the punching shear perimeter right let's draw the footing first right this is our footing and we have a column here draw the punching shear perimeter this is the punching shear perimeter we are going to consider i am going to hatch this part just to identify when you need to calculate the shear stresses so this length will be 1.5 times now our footing dimensions are 2000 millimeter first we calculate the critical perimeter critical perimeter what's the critical perimeter that is length of this perimeter right this length of this punch in shear perimeter that we are going to have how do we calculate there are four sides distance of each side you you know now 1.5 times d what's the d 250 from the data you have 150 right then that we have to multiply by 2 because there are two sides 1.5 d here 1.5 times d here two sides plus we have to add the column width that is 250 now what's the critical shear perimeter four side we have then this value become 1000 then that is 4000 millimeter right now we know the critical perimeter now let's calculate the uh, now we have to find the shear force in this area for that we have to calculate the outside area then if you know the outside area we can multiply it by the ultimate pressure then we can try find the shear force we know the perimeter now we have to find the shear force for that let's calculate the outside area of the pudding okay outside the perimeter the putting area will be 2 into 2 multiplied by this length now we have already calculated this length here it is 1000 1 into 1 so the value this will become 3 square meter now we have to calculate the shear force here the outside area we have calculated. we know the ultimate pressure under the footing as 175 from the uh, data 175 into 3 this this is the shear force now uh, it value become 5 5 to 5 kilo newton right. now let's calculate the shear stress at the critical perimeter that's also or at the punch in shear perimeter we know the shear force 5 to 5 into the 10 to the power 3 that is newton 
Then the critical parameter 4000 we have calculated already divided by effective death that of 2 by 0. From that we can get the shear stress as 0.55 newtons per millimeter square. Now we know the shear stress at the punching shear perimeter. Now we have to calculate the VC or the shear capacity. Now this is obtained based on the 100 as over BD according to the VS. Now if you know this value we can obtain the VC. In this example we consider it as a 0.6. We are not going to calculate that. We are not going to calculate that in this example because it's also kind of procedures there. So so say VC is 0.6 for this example, then V is less than VC, therefore no shear links required. If this is greater, then we have to again we have to do several checks and we have to calculate the shear links. Otherwise, you can increase the thickness of the putting uh, and you can adjust the putting thickness in a way that it does not require shear links. In isolated footing design, mostly we go with no shear links because it's kind of a difficult procedure to provide the shear links because now in a single footings uh, we don't have top reinforcement net therefore we cannot provide the shear links we have to provide the two reinforcement net that, that is double net then we have to provide the shear links now those things are done in a thick footings like craft foundations you could do because it have a double net uh, and those kind of situation you can provide but generally spread footings we avoid shear links be designed in a manner that it does not require shear. I hope that it's clear to you about the method of calculating punch in shear of a footing. Let's meet again from the video. Thank you very much for watching our videos.